been going? And how's your work been going? What have what have you been up to? Well, I have been really focused on childbirth education lately and supporting the mamas. Uh, I've transitioned out of the clinic and I'm more active teaching. I'm teaching online since the whole pandemic. It just makes sense to me and I can help more people Mm -hmm. working virtually too. So I have an online course that I created for childbirth uh, education to help empower expecting couples to really understand what's going on um, with our healthcare and the healthcare system and what they might be up against and how to better connect to their partner, how their partner can be more supportive for their birth, especially as possibly their only support person, Mm -hmm. because with the pandemic, we, you know, aren't able to have doulas off and on throughout this whole situation. Sure. So I'm just so incredibly passionate about educating and empowering these couples to feel like they have options during birth and and they have more satisfying uh, births for the whole family. Mm. What got you into this work? I don't know if I've ever asked you that. Um, Well, it's kind of a sad story, honestly. Um, So this is now almost 21 years ago, March will be 21 years. Um, I lost my first baby and I had a stillborn at term. She was 40 weeks. She died on her due date. And I had to go through um, with giving birth and having a dead baby. And it was literally the worst thing that ever happened to me. But um, unfortunately, you know, it happened. But at this point in time, I feel like from the worst thing has really come the best thing, which is my career. And so for the last 20 years or so, I was an acupuncturist clinically working with thousands of women through fertility, pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Also as a birth doula, attended about 250 births. So I'm just so passionate about that time in life that is so powerful for us women. It's like a rite of passage, right? To be able to give birth. And unfortunately, the things that I hear as a clinician is horrific. And, and it seems like most women go through the biggest trauma of their life, giving birth. Mm. And then people are like, here, you have a healthy baby. Yeah. Have a good day. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, you know, I think that there's just like a humanization factor missing. Mm. And um, I really think it's so important that to teach this information that isn't really a big focus in life. And, and so, so yeah, so really it was losing this child and, and, and then having the guts to have another pregnancy and to go through it again, not knowing the outcome, but then getting a lot of support from various integrative modalities that was super helpful for me. So I'm all about helping people and making a difference in people's lives now, and especially everything from fertility to birth. Yeah. So it's kind of transition, like you said, from the worst thing to the best thing. Yeah. And while I really, you know, you, I know that you can see and feel my passion when yeah. I talk yeah. about it, especially yeah. when I talk about educating women, how, how strongly I feel about helping people right. and making a difference, making a shift, making right. a conscious shift in the community, in the world um, for women, for women's yeah. health and, and the future of our children and our families. That's so exciting. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And then I know you've worked with so many people over the years. Do you have like, like a struggle that you see over and over again that people, you know, when people are preparing for birth, there's just kind of like a common theme that you yes. see? Yes. Yes. And th- this is why I'm so passionate because, you know, patients, I've seen thousands of patients over the years. And I think that consistency of care is really important so that that's something that like I would see a woman through fertility pregnancy and then they come back after the birth and I usually allow a lot more time for that visit because I know people really want to share their story and and sometimes emotions come with it um but I guess what my concern is that a lot of women are feeling disempowered and they're having bad experiences Mm -hmm. and they come in and they cry to me and they sob their freaking eyes out over and over and over and over and over again, year after year after year. And so something is wrong with the system, you know, something is wrong with the the culture around birth. And so 
I have attended home births. I've attended hospital births. I've attended C-sections. I've attended natural births, like epidural, everything, birth center in between. And so I think that a woman should give birth. It's her baby. It's her body. It's her way. I don't think that we should be told to do certain things. And so I think that when, when women and the families really take the time to educate themselves and to prepare for it, uh, they'll have better experiences. So, so unfortunately, the common theme that I see is that women come out of birth feeling raped sometimes. Mm-hmm. They feel like really bad. Their partners uh, shoved aside sometimes in different facilities, yeah. really feel, really run out of the room, like just terrible, terrible stories. And I just hear it family after family after family. So I think there's got to be another way. And, and that's my purpose in life now is to make a difference in this, this field. Right. So, right. Yeah. And what would you say, like the, like a myth that people have about preparing for birth or giving a birth, birth in the hospital? Is there something that you think needs to, yeah. like, um, <laughs> you know, one thing that I really want to educate people on is like, there are, um, there are options in healthcare for women's health. And you can see an OB, which is a doctor, or you could see a midwife. Now, if you're a normal, healthy woman having a normal, healthy baby, you can see a midwife. And midwives care for, uh, in most of the world, the majority of women, because the majority of women are healthy and having ha- healthy babies. Now, if there's sick babies, Um, you need a doctor, of course. So in most of the world, it's about 80% midwives. And then the rest we have OBGYNs for, you know, those, those occurrences. Well, here in the United States, we have 80% OBs. Mm -hmm. So I think the reality that a lot of women don't need to be with, with a doctor and, and that a midwife can care for somebody with low risks and with a baby with low risks. And what I've personally seen through the years is when women have midwives who would spend 60 minutes per visit versus six minutes, sure, the sure. average medical doctor, yeah. um, you get a lot more answered. You get a lot more emotional support. Um, and so I, I think that just not listening to the what's being told really asking lots of questions and looking at different options so if you are going to give birth in a hospital make sure you would take a course a childbirth education course not in that hospital because Mm -hmm. from my patients and clients over the years what they say is that class teaches you how to be a good patient in their hospital versus knowing like what are all the potential options so things like you could have a doula who is a birth support person who's going to support not just you, but your partner through the whole crazy long experience. Right. right. Yeah. Goes down, like as yeah. we know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, and it's such an exciting time in life. So it's, I think it's so great to have, you know, you teaching people and have helping them to prepare and, you know, because it is like, you can read a book, but to like really get it from somebody who's been there and has all the experience. Mm-hmm. And so what would you say, what, why do you think it is important to have kind of a, to get educated before birth? What would you say to? So I think that by being educated, you kind of are aware of what's happening in the world right now. Like what, what's the normal birth experience happening? What are your options? And, and weighing the pros and cons, you know, Mm -hmm. there are pros and cons of birthing at home, pros and cons of birthing in in a birth center, pros and cons of birthing in a hospital. And so if, if a woman is low risk, and what I've tend to tended to attract is um, healthy, natural women wanting natural births. And so especially if she's wanting a natural birth, there's no reason to give birth in a hospital hospitals are you know they make money with interventions and things Mm -hmm. like that so Mm -hmm. so especially if someone's not looking to go down that intervention path to just remove themselves from the situation and we are seeing a bigger shift with women uh being a little more open and interested in midwives these days and learning like you don't actually have to go to the hospital you know and so that's i know that's a big thing sure yeah yeah people like oh my gosh i know Um, yeah but again, teaching 
classes help you learn like what are the options like what are other things that you can do women have been doing this for thousands of years yeah so it is a normal natural process and you know that in most places of the world women give birth where the baby's conceived at home mm, okay right so you know there's there's a shift so i think just really educating themselves and learning it doesn't have to be and it's not it's not like it is in the movies it's not a <laughs> uh, right yeah yeah <laughs> the first contraction and our water breaking all over the floor right, yeah, yeah like having a baby two minutes later with everybody yeah. Right. You know, right. I've seen silent births. I've seen water births. And, mm-hmm. and so yeah. what, what's most noticeable to me is those second time moms, those mm-hmm. second families that when the first birth, they had a horrible experience in, in yeah. the hospital. They didn't feel heard. They didn't, their partner didn't feel included in the process. And then they felt like there was more pain and more mm-hmm. uh, challenge connecting with the partner after they were like actually mad at them after mm-hmm. the birth. Sure, and sure. Harder time connecting with the baby when you know, a few years later and, and she gets pregnant again, she realizes, I don't want to repeat that same mistake. Right. Right. And, and that was, that was really terrible. Yeah. And so to be able to see a family through to teaching their education, and then I'm all, also a birth doula. So I actually had the, the honor to attend this family's second birth mm. that wound up in a birth center and the husband caught the baby oh. after the mom gave birth in the right. water. Wow. So yeah. and put it on the mom's belly. So it couldn't yeah. have been yeah. more heartfelt and healing for that family. Right. And then when I got to talk to that that mom afterwards, she said it was so nice to just integrate them into the family and everybody bonded. And I didn't feel like, you know, big time S H I T, you know, like sure, just, oh, sure. Yeah. I was able yeah. to like have energy for her family. So yeah. I think that educating people for birth is something that you don't know what you don't know till you go through it. And so like, I just want to help people before they get to that point and, and just share how important it is to get, to get that information so that hopefully you don't have that situation. You know, there are things people can do. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think the biggest mistakes are when people are looking for a birth education program or classes? Is there anything that you think people may? may Um, I think, again, like looking at options, like if you want to just learn what the hospital policies are, then you would take a hospital class. But if you're really open to options to take a class outside and I don't, you know, I know that hospitals save lives. I'm not anti-hospital in any way. I'm just uh, a little bit concerned overall at the high number of interventions, a high number of C-sections that have evolved. You know, for example, I was born in the 1970s. The U.S. had a seven to 10 percent C-section rate. Currently, we're at 34 oh, percent. Wow. So one in three women are having major abdominal surgeries. And sometimes I don't know how necessary that was. Right. And and so I think that's that's a big trauma that a lot of women um also have and share so to avoid an an unnecessary c-section that's going to be a lot harder to heal and bond and connect with than Mm -hmm. having a vaginal natural birth and being able to stand up and walk Mm -hmm. (laughs) shortly thereafter right right yeah yeah so i think just really getting options is what things and so educating people that you do need to get educated i've heard a lot of women also say like i'm just gonna go and just see how it is (laughs) No, 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 no. Right, you know, if you're right. going to run a marathon, you're going to hire a coach. Yeah. And if you're, yeah. you know, like you need help. This is you a do. very good thing. Definitely. So. Yeah. I remember going through the class and then talk, talking, learning about transition and or that part right before. And I'm like, that's not going to happen to me. You know, I'm in there learning the stuff. I'm like, that's, I'm not, my body's not going to do that. And sure enough, of course it did, you know, and it's right. like, oh, <laughs> I should have paid attention oh. more in that section, you know, yeah. but um, so like, what do you think if you wanted to share, like what would be some things people can do to have their best possible birth? Like any little tidbits or tips? Yeah, yeah, no, some of, some of the things to, to have a best possible birth is really, um, you know, one is getting yourself educated. Two is creating your dream birth team. Mm. You, you know, there are options and people can shift while they're pregnant. You can shift sure. providers. You can interview different doctors and midwives. 
Um, so I think really a lot is where you're going to give birth, who your providers are, who your team is, um, how your partner might be able to best support you as well. So those seem to be very big things and decreasing the fear. So mm -hmm. by getting educated, a lot of women are just terrified of the yeah. whole like this thing is going to come out where? What? <laughs> right. I don't want to do this. It was fun I'm going in, but what now? <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Right. You know, so we know they're, it's, they're scared. It's, it's scary. Like the whole unknown. And even if you've done it once, twice, three times, it's, we know what we're up against. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think helping somebody um, get connected, especially to their partner sure. during this time. And especially even more during the pandemic when we haven't been able to have doulas in the hospitals, that partner role is so, so paramount that, and there's so much that they can do. So, um, so yeah, getting educated, creating your birth team and yeah. finding ways to involve your partner are going to be really important for having an optimal birth. Right. And then one that kind of, you know, as, as the baby grows, like you were saying, it just kind of helps, you know, as the family grows together, having that really positive birth experience. Oh, it sounds uh, almost makes me want to have another baby, but not really. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so yeah, how can people get in touch with you to learn more about, you know, your classes and what's, what's what you're offering? What's the best way to reach you? Well, the best way to reach me is uh, via website and we'll put the link below. Okay. Great. So, um, yeah, I'm going to cr cut this part because I'm changing my website and I'm not sure what I'm going to say. So sure. anyway, blah, blah, blah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so that's, I guess that's it. So okay. uh, I was going to, I was wanting to ask you um, the virtual thing. Do you want to talk about how that works for you as such a, like how, how has that transition been for you? And I don't know if you want to talk about that, but I'm no, just, that was a curious question for me. How, um, how I might be able to help people, um, how I might be able to help people virtually. Like birth to me seems like such a hands-on thing, right? And obviously, but there's so much you can do virtually. I don't know if you want to talk about like, yeah, yeah, I would love to like <laughs> what, what, you know, basically you're asking if somebody wanted to consult with me or talk with me, some kind of thing like that. Yeah. I would love for you to ask me that question. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Please. So, um, okay. Um, okay. So birth seems like such a hands-on thing, you know, but I know you're, you're working with people virtually all the time. How does that work? And what are your, what results are you getting from people? How are, how are they responding to the virtual um, consults and coaching? Yeah, it's wonderful to have it be so much more accepted since the pandemic, that this virtual right. world. So people are accustomed to Zoom classes. So I have um, both individual and group classes on Zoom. Okay. And so it's wonderful because they don't have to be in the same time zone, in the same state, country, anything. And we can set up the best ways to support them. So I have group classes that start each month. And then you can also work with me individually. Uh, a lot of times people have very specific situations, conditions, concerns. So I do a lot of Zoom calls, just virtually having a consultation with po potentially the, the partner as well and or the whole family, whoever has questions. And uh, I just do my best to support them with all the resources and tools. Uh, as a Chinese medicine doctor, I can help find acupuncturists around the world. I can help find uh, birth professionals around the world. I'm very well connected. So I, it's amazing to me when somebody reaches out that I don't even know on social media and says, can you find me a midwife in Oregon? Right. And then I post on my group and okay. I find them too. Right. So, right. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so I know. Cool. Yeah. So the cool. world has definitely so. expanded and it's so great that people can have access to you, you know, no matter where they are. So that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I love it. I love helping people. I'm such a birth geek. It's like, there's nowhere I'd rather be. There's nothing I'd rather talk about. Yeah, I so. hear you. I hear you. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Well, great Thank you so much. Yeah.